Hi guys and welcome back to what is now round nine, the final round of day one in the Frankfurt Regional Championships, where we have uh, kind of a matchup kind of similar to what we saw earlier on, but with a different Zoroark partner, and it's Malamar again, but who knows, it could be played really differently. Yeah, definitely some differences here um, on display than what we saw earlier. Um, we've got Seb Simmons facing off against Daniel Lashko. Um, Seb piloting the Zoro pod and Daniel piloting the Malamar deck. And Malamar decks have a lot of different texts in them. They differ from person, the lists differ, differ from person to person. Yeah. Well, it's also going to be a case of Seb, winner of the Sheffield Regional Championships last season. You know, wanting to kind of take on like a run of form that he had last season that was unbelievable. He really did. Yeah. Like he was just kind of yeah, he was topping everything. Like basically every time he looked at a top thirty-two, like oh, this Seb. Like, you know, and like, what a breakout season for him. Yeah, he's um, gotten to be like a, such a good player over like such a seemingly short amount of yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, it's just unbelievable. Um, and he's going to be playing as our pod, yep. uh, which we haven't featured yet today. Um, so kind of a different take on the, the Zoroark lists. Um, which is kind of interesting because a lot of people are like, but how is it ever better than Rock right now? And the answer really is, this one doesn't have an ability. Yeah. That means Weevil doesn't really help them. Exactly. And also, like, Galissabod's just one of the most high-value attackers we got. Like, one basic energy, or one energy in any case, for 120 damage is still really, really good. And then, you know, the access to the, uh, the ability to go DCE, Choice Band, there's a Lele, just take my last two prizes, but there goes a Rayquaza. Hitting 180... And you're back on the bench as well. Yeah, like, hitting 180 is actually super tidy in this yeah. format. It used to be 210 was the benchmark, then 190... Yeah, we're back, to, we're back to 180. 180 is like more or less okay right now. Um, so, you know, we're going to go into this next round. Um, both players are basically set up. Um, as far as I can tell, I think they're just making sure. Yeah, we're almost ready to be in this one. Yeah, you have a nice handshake between the two of them. They're not, they're not in the way yet. They're just shaking hands. Worth pointing out as well with the records, this is a win and in, so to make day two, um, yep. you will need to win this game. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Daniel, undefeated, going undefeated in for 4-0-4 uh, four, four record. 4-0-4. Four, oh, four. Um, this is uh, Seb, 5-2-1, uh, so both on 16 points. Yep. One more win, and that's, that's day two locked up. Exactly, so an awful lot riding on this game. Um, you know, we feature Seb quite a lot on stream. He's almost always in a position where you can feature him on stream, because <laughs> his record's normally so good. Um, and we, uh, you know, we had a chat with him a few times. He plays Zara Rock really well. That's what he was playing when he won she uh, Sheffield. Uh, Zara, Zara Rock then... Um, so you know that there's going to be some, you know, any big decisions he has to make, he's going to kind of nail uh, throughout the course of these games. Yeah, exactly. Like like we've been saying, he's a good player, and Zoroark rewards good players. Yeah. So, you know, it's a natural deck. Um, I do want to talk about the Malamar for a sec. We'll just do a quick run through it and see what kind of weird attacks he's playing. Uh, one Mimikyu is one of the cooler ones that's standing out to me here. The one that has the copycat attack that lets you just copy whatever attack your opponent did last for two energy. That's pretty cool. Um... So he's also playing two copies of the Oxys, so he's more yep. prepared for the fighting, uh, you know, having more fighting text to hit the bigger things with multiple energies attached. Uh, he also has the uh, one uh, copy of Marshadow and two copies of Marshadow GX, which is fairly yep. typical in these kinds Standard of lists now. Um, so this is looking more like a like if you look at the supporter lineup, this is I will draw all of the cards and I will do it every turn with four Cynthia, four Lily, four Guzma. <laughs> Still keeping the two friend bar as well that we've seen from a few Yeah, we've got four Mysterious Treasure, four Acrobike. Like, this is a deck that's looking to go, right, turn one, it's going to take a while. Yep. But then I'm set <laughs> up, and I'm just going to keep attaching energy and going, knockout. Yeah, and again, the cool thing about Malamar decks is, you know, he's playing a 4-4 line in Malamar, and the thing is, once you get the Malamar into play, once you get the energy in the discard pile, you can set up whatever attacker you want, whenever, essentially. Um, so it looks like Daniel's placed his prize cards in upside down. So, okay, well. <laughs> if, uh, if any Australians in the chat, can you help us out with what the prize cards are, please? <laughs> um, so, two inky prize is actually really inconvenient. That, it uh, is. It's actually a big in deal. In in inconvenient? <laughs> oh, no. Uh, <laughs> it's that time. Uh, look, it's the watching. last round, all right? Like, yeah, this is where the puns come out. Um, but, you know, it's going to be a really interesting matchup because now Daniel, even though he, set, he wants to set up really quick, actually his setup is going to consist of two yeah, inky. Maybe not. Maybe not enough. Um, so actually looking over at the, quickly over at uh, Seb's list so he's got one of those printed lists that you can do online except for a couple of cards where he's clearly gone last minute yeah these need to change yeah some last minute decisions here um, it's nothing even that particularly crazy it's just some standard stuff he has thrown in one copy of uh, the old Boswell as well so that, I think there's also a copy of a non-GX Tapu Lele the non-GX one 
Yes, I think this is the one okay, for it is. the. Uh, so he shows him basically. So um, this looks like it was the one that he's gone. Uh, this is how I beat Rayquaza. Yeah. Attach with the first. Like, I can't remember exactly how much damage it does, but that's his plan. Yeah. Um, it actually it does twenty damage times the number of energy on uh, your opponent's active. So in Ray's case, that'll be three. That's sixty choice band. That's ninety. That's a KO. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a a really kind of nice option to be able yeah. to get. Um, Easier to activate because he's only playing the one type of Coco and he doesn't necessarily want to bench the Coco yeah. too early because it's so valuable in the matchup. It, looked, it looks like he did have a tough time deciding between the Deden and the Tapu Lele. But. <laughs> yeah, it was to cross out basically. Like, this looks like a thing that this morning was like, I've got to play Rainbow Energy. I've got to put this in. <laughs> I'm, I'm not doing it the other way. It's worked for him. He's 5 2 1. So. Currently, he's going pretty well. Um, so they're underway in the round. Uh, Zorok is a Zoro active against the Deoxys. Deoxys is basically the replacement for the Evolution's Mewtwo. Yeah, exactly. From last format. With a much better second attack that the Malamar deck can actually use. Yeah, it really is. And the ability to, you know, this is your answer to big Buzzwalls. So yep. Buzzwalls that have been uh, bestringed to. Uh, but they're also, you know, 120, and then you just reattach the energy next to it with the Malamar yeah, anyway. Yeah. It's actually really nice. Yeah, and not difficult at all to power up in the deck once you get going. No, it's it's an awful lot more flexible. Um, also, to note, uh, compared to, I think the Mewtwo Evo has two retreat versus the one Deoxys. Yes, that, that is also a big difference. Um, which is, I find weird because it is the speed form of Deoxys on the card, which you'd assume yeah. would have a free retreat, but never mind. And Daniel is playing one of those lists that plays four skateboards, so anything with a one retreat cost uh, benefits from that greatly. Yep. So, Seb, not having a great hand to start. That was basically DCE Cynthia? Let's, well, uh, let's see what I get now. Uh, the other Zuru, that's a pretty big deal. Though, this is Malamar, you're not under that much time pressure. You know, you have maybe two or three turns. Yeah. Or maybe, or, you know, you have at least another turn um, before things get too serious. Decides to take the risk and assume Daniel's not running some kind of weird deck where Deoxys is just a tech and he's got double colorless energy in it and thinks, no, my Zuru is going to live this turn. Yeah. So, and away goes Daniel's deck of two Acrobikes. The first one, double energy. Very easy decision. Yep. Makes no difference. <laughs> the second one, Having to double check, it's a Cynthia and a Treasure, um, both of which have actually single copies of our prized. Um, which he's going to find out now by playing the mysterious Treasure, getting the search, the deck search in. Yeah, I'm sure he's going to realise that he's not going to get as many Malamar up early game as he. Yeah, he to. like really this deck wants to get two. It's definitely established, yeah. and there's a big risk with only being able to bench two in K that one of them is dealt with, and then you're stuck. Yeah, <laughs> and then you're going. Huh, this is an issue. Um, because now I have one uh, way of attaching, and that's not going to be uh, enough. Yeah. Um, well, even with two Malamar in play, I mean, if all goes to well and he starts taking surprises early, he might end up, you know, it, it's definitely not going to lose him the game outright necessarily, right off the bat. So Daniel's opting to discard the friend ball. Yeah. He's going to go, look, Seb's not going to, he didn't have a Lele last turn. He might need to Lele for a supporter, but I can just get whatever I want now. Yeah, I don't exactly. have to wait. It's a very strange card, Friend Ball. Um, it's kind of one of those things that I guess your opponent can play around, but also, would they bother? Yeah, it's a weird one, because especially because playing around it means not benching a Lele, yeah. which can not... Or, you know, sometimes, De definitely not worth it. Yeah, sometimes it's like, cases. yeah, no, I need the supporter right now. Um, so, yeah, they have some control over if it's any good, but it's not ideal. Yeah. Um, and then refilling the hand with the first turn Lily... Uh, having already burnt through a load of it with the two acrobikes and uh, all the uh, search cards, um, he did at least find the two NK in his deck. So yeah, the two that are there are now both out. Seb's going to be trying to work out okay how to go for it. He has the Lele in hand. He has a Zorok in hand. Um, it looks like it's an energy of some sort. I don't think it's a Zorok. Uh, let's have a look. It might be one of the rainbows. Yeah, it could be a rainbow energy from like an older set. Yeah, it is. I think. Which is uh, one of the nicer arts, actually. I do like the yeah, other rainbow. Um, he's really having to consider his options because he doesn't really want to leave the DCE'd uh, Zerua active if he can help it. Um, just going straight into the Cynthia, no opting. Yeah, the Lele might come in handy late. Yeah. I mean, the odds of him hitting his Zerua off the Cynthia are pretty decent. Yeah, they're not too bad. You know, he's playing the Ultra Balls, the, you know, the four Ultra Ball, yeah. three Timer Ball. So, as opposed to the Great Ball. Um, I know it's actually a really weird thing for a lot of people, but in terms of the odds of hitting certain things, early game, when you have maybe 40 cards left in deck, the odds of one of the top seven being a Zorark are pretty slim, right? It's yeah. seven in 40 something. Well, it's not because you have multiple Zorark, but. Um, and then you also have, uh, you know, with, but with Timer Ball, 
a quarter of the time, you get one. Yeah. Well, I, I think in this situation, especially, right, where I said, you know, he has two Zoros two on the bench and just, and just decides this India, like, I think I'd rather hit timer ball in that situation than great ball. Yeah. So it's, it's one of these kind of, sometimes you get double, sometimes you get none, but most of the time you get the one you wanted that you would have hit with a great ball anyway. What we're trying to say is we miss Evo Zoda. Yeah, an awful lot more consistent as a result. Yeah. Very fair card as well. He does miss the Zorok though, and uh, Daniel's going to go ahead and attach that to Oxus again, so... It looks like he's just going to take the knockout in the Zerua. But he does resist Psychic, so... Not quite the knockout? Not quite, so... Be 20, plus the uh, 40 for the DCE, minus the, uh, the 20 again, so we're back to 40. So yeah, this would actually survive this um, attack, but he might actually really be looking to... Okay, I can use the Power Blast next to I can, I can, If I get another one energy out now, mm. I can start Power Blasting. I can start kind of pushing through. He could also bring up the Wimpot. He's got a Guzman in his hand if he was really that afraid of first impression next turn, but yeah. might not be a priority for him. So he gets some Alamar down and starts attaching to stuff. Um, and that fighting type weakness is definitely going to come in handy at some point in this game. Yeah. Uh, well, so again, this is one of the things that uh, the pod can, uh, the Wimpot, uh, the Glissapod can really help with. It can one shot the Marshadow yeah. with just a choice band. 150 HP is low. Yeah, it's not an awful lot. It's enough that a lot of attackers can one-shot it, which would normally be looking to take two hit knockouts. Mm. Um, so we do see Glissapod come in with the band ready to go. He doesn't have the grass energy right now. Um, if he did, I think Daniel would be very concerned because yep. <laughs> there goes one of the Marshadow. And kind of back to square one in terms of some of your attachments. Um, so probably just going to get drops for off this later. Yeah, there's going to be... Uh, I think his hand size is three, so he's looking probably looking to Cynthia here. He's not going to draw enough cards off the Lily to really dig him out of trouble. Yeah, definitely not. And that's a really did survive with the 20 HP left thanks to that resistance. So again, he's got another opportunity to evolve it. He could evolve it in Philip's mentioned, just take the KO on the Deoxys if you yeah. want to. Um, you know, take the first prize. Uh, one of the options is he wants to, you know, you don't have to worry about taking the first prize now. You don't have to worry about going too far ahead because you're never going to get punished with an N. Yep. You can actually just go, oh, that's, that's a prize I could take. Uh, he knows it's an easy prize for later in the game. It only has 100 HP, so actually he doesn't even need to fill a left. Uh, um, that's true, actually. He doesn't yeah. even need to fill the board. He just needs to hit Zorro. That round for 20 helping him out. Um, and just, okay, so he goes to the Lily. Okay, okay, so he must have had enough cards left. He also has prize for his Cynthia. Uh, he used one earlier, I believe, and has uh, three in the list. So maybe he's like, okay, I need yep. to save one for sure. Uh, but I think he's missed the Zorowak again. Yeah, it looks like it. He's hit basically everything other than Zorowak in that hand. He's got Palpad, he's got the Lele, but... Um, and annoyingly, he also doesn't have the, the grass attachment, because at least then yeah. he knows that if the Zoro went down, he could still just go in, declare, armor press, or... Uh, a cross and cut depending on what he wants to do next turn uh, he'd be in a fairly nice position he's going to retreat a very interesting way of promoting of just kind yeah, of picking like the, the lay lay forward yeah. so it's just like right not that one out I don't mind like, that, that, that one's yours you can see Seb deep in thought um, so compared to some of the other players we've had today Seb is not one of the ones who will probably react least to anything that happens in front of him he has one of the best poker faces of like yeah. any player I know which goes a long way yeah it, you know he, he's never going to look surprised by anything um, and you can tell that he's you, you can tell that now he look how focused he is he, he sees the second copy of the friend ball and he's like okay there's two of those cool yep. noted again friend ball now getting that value since Seb benched the Lele but again it's not really worth playing around no. um, so second Manoir comes in but there are no attackers currently in Daniel's discard. Um, I think he has an Acrosma in there? He might have an Acrosma GX. He did at some point have one in his hand, didn't he? Um, I don't know if he's discarded it is the issue. Yeah, I'm not sure. I just saw him flick through and was like trying to get a quick glimpse. So, he's just going out. Okay, Power Blast it is. Yep. You know, here he's not... You know, sometimes you're kind of concerned about, okay, if I commit too many energy to the active and he gets knocked out... I'm going to struggle. Yeah. But that's not a problem when you have Malamar. Not because really. You just no. come back. 
um, you know, the the ability to kind of bend the rules on an energy attack is a really big deal. Yeah, exactly. And a lot of the most successful decks do this, like Big Vault and Magnus Own, that we saw on, on stream earlier as yep. well. Um, I think it was actually you yesterday who pointed out that all the successful stage twos, or someone pointed out to me yesterday, all the successful stage twos in the current format, except, except our energies. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, you know, that's if it works on a stage two, it definitely works on a stage one. <laughs> um, it also says that if you're playing a stage two, it has to be like really, really good at breaking the rules. So, well, he's not out of options to keep drawing. So no, I mean we've said this for the last couple of turns, but surely this is the turn he hits the rock. <laughs> you think? I mean, there are at least there's three in there, right? He's playing. He's playing the full four. So he's playing it. Yeah. There's one prized. There's got to be one in there somewhere. And again, he hasn't played any timer balls or anything like that yet, so he's got it. Yeah. Well, he hasn't hit the ultra ball into the to it yet. Like, there's there's probably more outs than there are ways to miss. Yeah. Um, so this turn uses the, his last Cynthia. Although I think he pal it back one back in, so so actually not his last Cynthia at all. Mm. Um, the Marshall having two energy on it in the bench though means it could just copy Deoxys' attack after the Deoxys gets knocked out uh, if it gets knocked out, and yeah. Then it'll be then it'll be three prizes to the good then. Yeah. Uh, well, so that's something that sometimes the Nanomar decks don't want to go too far ahead because one of the biggest things they can do is use the Dormings and Crossland GX attack that's true, that's true. to make themselves immune for a turn, and that's normally enough time to basically lock out a game. And it's also good to copy that with Marshadow because we were just saying how fragile he is. That yeah. It's nice to find a way to protect them. Yeah, to be able to kind of hide it behind an actual like really good GX attack is actually really nice. Yeah. So I think double. I think Seb was there checking the discard for both the number of energy, but also what options uh, Daniel has. Because I think what mm. he might be going here is like, look, maybe I evolved the benched. Well, did he hit anything to evolve with? Yeah, I think he had an ultra ball. Okay, that's what I'm more concerned about. There we go. Oh. So he's just gonna he's just gonna, he's just gonna pass because again, losing another zero it's not. Yeah, and maybe it's, it's serious. I mean, it does, in a sense, play around that GX attack that we were just talking about as well. So there's, there's some benefits to it. So he's looking in. I know that, yeah, you were right. There was indeed a Necrozma in there. So there's three energy already on. He has the Guzma. Does he have the attachment for turn to be able to hit for the knockout, or is he just going to be able to hit for the 180? Could be. A, he's got it there he's for got the knockout. There, yeah. So we now have a big discard four energy. Take two prizes turn. Yeah, and he's taken the two NKs as well. I mean, he's probably you know, going, oh, there they are. <laughs> um, so we see Seb's got the DCE in hand. He has the Ultra Ball. He had the Ultra Ball last turn, but I think he opted not to play it. Yeah. Well, he was probably worried about that Marshadow, and rightly so. Mm. Like, I mean, this turn he can KO the Marshadow if he just finds DC choice band. Exactly. He's kind of gone, well, that's the only real threat on that side of the board right now. Uh, the... Deoxys, even though it hits 120, oh, it hits 100 uh, versus the Zarowak because of resistance, discards an energy, which means that Daniel has to find a way of getting out of the active to reattach and then back into the active to do it yeah. again. Or just keep attaching from hand, but then that eventually you're going to miss energy from hand because there's so many already in the discard. Exactly, yeah. We do sometimes see these mana decks play one of those Sudo Wado that reduces um, the Zarowak player's bench size to four, which means that even with a choice man, they don't actually hit the 150, which is a interesting way to deal with responses like this but um, in this particular matchup like you were saying first impression is also another great way of dealing with Mark Shadow so yeah having double option to deal with one of the trickiest parts of this matchup yeah but having said that Daniel has taken a pretty big lead here so yeah three prizes for the good already uh, taking the early advantage Seb having missed a card a few cards well basically everything for a few turns. <laughs> um, you know, now he needs a big turn to be able to make up for it. There's the timer ball. So hopefully we see double tails. Oh no. Um, you can see he was already kind of picking up the deck going, I just want another Sorok, please. Again, Evo Soto was, was a really good card. Yeah. Um, so there's... He, he it, has an Ultra Ball by the looks of it, so he can get one more trade off and I think he's got a dig for this DCE. Yeah. Um, that is, if he's worried about Daniel powering up the Marsh Shadow again. Um, do you think that's likely? Well, to do so, he'd have to Guzma, then retreat the Deoxys. So yeah. he, like, that's actually not too hard to do. Um, and then he just pulls out the other Zarok on the bench, pushes it back forward, takes a knockout with something. 
yeah. and off we go. So we see the devoured field. It's only 130, unfortunately, for Seb. Yeah, for but that's actually really relevant because of the type of cocoa. Yes, that is correct. A flying flip later on now actually finishes off the uh, the Marshadow. So still, you know, still making the most of it by going, okay, I still commit the devoured field. I can still finish the Marshadow off from the bench later. Mm. Um, and spread damage everywhere else at the same time. I did have to double check that he kept the type of cocoa on his list, but he has indeed, yes. Um, if you're playing Galizapod, I think one of the best things you can do is play the type of cocoa for the free retreat because. Yeah, there's some great just, synergy going yeah, on. Yeah, you've got to keep moving this back and forth. And you struggle to hit some numbers, so you know you really need to find a way of making those up sometimes. Exactly. Um, so, to those watching, by the way, we apologize if there's any lag. Um, the stream, um, like, the, it, we've had really weird connections all day in terms of up and down for being fine and then going back into lag so we do apologize about that yeah unfortunately just some technical issues i'm afraid um and here he's just going to copy he's just <laughs> copy like, copycat yeah copy the copycat to copy the writer's beating for the knockout um at least it's not copying copycat to copy tricks the gx to do something because that would be far too many copies it's round nine please don't make me do this <laughs> <laughs> so ultra ball again a little flick forward but uh, okay i'm definitely playing the ultra ball um, it does feel like this game's really gotten away from Seb. Uh, he's been in incredibly unfortunate throughout the whole thing. He really has. Um, do you think this is maybe a point where he thinks about scooping? This is a game he needs to win, after all. So I think at this point he still has enough time and he knows that most of the times games in this matchup could be pretty quick. The series we had earlier on, we did get through all three games pretty comfortably. Um, so being able to kind of... You know, you know, and Seb will know that he can definitely find the time. Yeah. Um, you know, you can already see that he's starting to play a little quicker already. You know, he's not think taking quite as long things about certain decisions. Judge, the only real hand disruption in this format outside of the uh, like a supporter based yeah. uh, hand disruption anyway. Might help him out here. Daniel's hand was pretty big, um, but the issue actually against the, uh, the these <laughs> Malad decks once their board is established, yeah. it doesn't matter what's in their hand anymore, because now all he's going to do is he's going to. Double Malamar to the other uh, Marshadow, attach from hand, and promote. That's the Oxus that's already got energy on it as well, so he's got something to, to pull there. Um, and that's if Seb can actually get the KO on this Marshadow on the active. Uh, with the cards I've seen him draw, then that's the case. Nope, it's just the pass, not, not even the DCE. Well, he can't copy Copycat now. This is true. <laughs> he has to. He's making him work for this uh, knockout. Mm -hmm. Uh, so he's well, there going yep, just yep. for the win part, and there's the end of the first game. Um, Seb, unlucky there, I think. Incredibly unlucky from Seb, but we did get a great showcase of Daniel's deck there, though. Yeah, well, this is exactly what that deck is designed to do. I think it's referred to as Gas Can. I think yeah, this, is the, yeah. this is the kind of build that was uh, referred to as Gas Can of just go fast. Yep. Like, just, <laughs> like the format has slowed down. So if you go fast, then nothing can keep up, and you're able to you know push through and do things like that against ma matchups that are on paper and favorable yeah no it's good logic for the vanity game right now um and also i mean ideally this game we're going to see him not rise to in k and maybe we'll see, we see some even scarier turns coming out of him so well yeah he did all of that on the back of having only two mana exactly and you know managed to get both the uh the the into play yeah. and that was all he needed yep. so both players gotta shuffle up uh, seb will be conscious of wanting to do so Kind of quickly. Yeah. Um, Still plenty of time left for some, some more games. Though. Yeah, like there's two games left. Seb also knows he has to win two in a row now. Yeah. Um, which means that uh, you know he's probably hoping that the kind of the missing bits and pieces that you really expect to hit, maybe he's got that out of the way. And yeah. Maybe, yeah. Hopefully we can get a really nice game where he's good to go. And so yeah, they clearly have been hitting throughout the day as well for him. Yep. But you can see the same for Daniel. Um, these decks which require these really aggressive fast starts to get to four four wins and four or four or four that means that basically in four of them matches it worked perfectly in the other four it kind of worked <laughs> um, the other four where it worked out one of the games of the three yeah, yeah and then the other one the other opponent won and they were like we just have no time left yeah um, so it's a it's a tricky kind of matchup to have to, to, to navigate where both players do need kind of you know, we obviously want to get off to good starts um, but they're both capable of not hitting them anymore. You yeah. know, the Zorowark decks last year, they basically never missed anything. Uh, from turn one through to the end of the game, they almost always had what they needed. And now, unfortunately, with some of the cards they've lost, it's just not doable. Yeah. Bridget gone, double puzzle gone, um, plant, and like Town Lab in Robin's case. Uh, <laughs> it's like, 
there there were such integral parts of the deck before that it does seem to I mean it's still clearly a very good deck but it's it's lost a lot of the steam that it had from last season mm -hmm. so there's nothing too serious price from Seb um, he'd obviously prefer the Zorowak wasn't in there yeah. um, given the trouble he had to get to it last game but outside of that it's, you know, it's just a couple of the supporters, but he's playing high, fairly high support accounts. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't think he, he could be mad about that. Um, is this a mulligan or two from Daniel? It is indeed. So, except getting the extra two cards and going first means he's definitely going to be able to make use of them and not get judged out of it. Yeah, excellent start. Um, he might also you know, be looking to hit his own judge to kind of deny Daniel mm. at some point this turn if he can get a decent enough start. Do you think judge turn one will be safe? I mean, you could literally for eight out of it and that feels... It always depends on exactly what your... You know, if you open a couple of nest balls and you already have a Zorok in hand, you're like, yeah, sure, I'll just judge yeah. turn one, it's fine. But it, it really is dependent on what you're holding. In my experience, at least, judge never disrupts your opponent. but <laughs> Only ever disrupts yourself. So, so again, upset and prizes, in keeping with the, the way you oh, evolve in NK. Um, it's, well, he doesn't have two in game, um, right? <laughs> yeah, so now this time he has three. So okay. If, so if we follow the same, uh, the same pattern, it's not going to be a good game three if we get <laughs> that far. Um... Right, that's <laughs> that is not a good start for, for Daniel, and he hasn't even had to play a card in this game. Yeah, yet. This, this is this is hard mode that he's playing <laughs> on right here. Um, so there we go. We have the Wimpod straight in um, in the active. The Wimp out ability is super useful ability on it's these a first really turns. Good if uh, Seb can get himself into the Tapu Coco, he's just gonna push that forward and go right. Okay, I have options next turn. Yeah. Like I can go into the Zura, I can go into a Glitterpod. I will find something. Yeah, exactly. Wimp out um, really doesn't navigate that three retreat cost that Wimpod normally boasts. Do you see this double Lele in hand? And I think I see a Zoroark as well, right? Um, looks like it. I think that might be the first card he's got to the left there. Yeah, so probably just going to go, okay, I think I can just, like, yeah, with the Zoroark already there, he's like, yeah, okay, Lily seems safe. Yeah, exactly. And that's what he's going for. You know, you can draw enough cards from this. But you also don't want to lose the Zoroark. Yeah. Lily's actually a blessing for all these decks which you need to evolve because if you open it, you can still get your setup done without losing a piece. Exactly. You know, the Sycamores and the Ends, there's an awful lot of kind of having to discard stuff and kind of have to go again. So, four plus uh, is it, is it five, I think you already had in his hand, so it's just another three. We see another Zoroark, we see Tiger Balls, we see all sorts of uh, He's, he's already things. got a much better start than he had yeah. the last game. Well, so, this, so this game he definitely has options yep. to go for, as opposed to kind of being stuck with, okay, I guess I've got to survive a couple of turns with whatever I've got. Um, meanwhile, again, off Daniel goes, he's just going to start picking up his deck and putting parts of it into the discard pile. Uh, with, first with the Acrobike, he's got one of the Malamar, um, that would be the only one he'll be able to find these <laughs> for for a little yeah. while. Um, He's going to be find out treasure. soon enough. Yep. Um, you now we get to see how good his poker face is. Yep. Uh, okay, I'm going to go through. I'm going to look for the Inkays. I guess we go for the Deoxys, it looks like. Um, <laughs> okay, I don't know if anyone else spotted that, but there was a definite twitch of the eyebrow there of... You what? You definitely go through your deck a few times here to make sure that you're seeing this right, that there really are three of them in there. <laughs> it's like, they're not in my hand, are nope. they? He's going for the Marshadow. Yep. Well, he knows that Seb's already got a big hand. It wouldn't be too difficult for Seb to have... Th like, he knows he needs to get something on the yeah. board because all it takes is Seb to go, Zorok DC. So it's a great response free. to the Lily, but other than that, he can actually attach to the Mimikyu and filch his way out of his own mind. This is also true. He really has to. Um, but, yeah, now we, we now see that Daniel's going to you know, have to find a different way of getting things to, uh, to be set up this yeah, time. Yeah, got to think outside the box for this one. And... You also saw Seb's reaction to being Marshadowed after having an eight-card hand. He was like, thanks, I didn't need these anyway. I'm a Zorark deck. I'll draw her into everything anyway. It's, I'll just, just trade. Um, I think Daniel got a Cynthia off that as well. So he has an option for, at least for next turn. So we could opt to not filch. Well, he hasn't played a supporter yet, so... He, oh, no, this is also for, true. Lily for seven off of Marshadow is not too bad. Either. That's, that's pretty good. You know, just going, okay, right, you have too many cards in your hand. So get rid of them. Also, I want all the cards you had in your hand. Or the same number. He couldn't ask for better. Um, and he still managed to draw into the one of NK that's left. They didn't the, the really funny thing about this is always that Seb has no idea that Daniel has prized three NKs. Um, and we do see the fields, first of all, so that's awesome. But 
like so as far as Seb's concerned, he always has to be aware of this threat of like, oh, surely he's gonna avenge one of a bunch of NKs at some point. Seb threw that time of all down with the kind of disdain of this better be at least one heads. But he did hit one heads. So that's all he needs. But that was that was very much kind of right. If this is not heads, I'm really frustrated. Um I'm getting into the Zorark because now the game plan of Zorark is online of I'm just gonna draw a bunch of cards, have more options, and always find ways to play around what the board state is. Yeah, the main thing they're meant to do. Um, and he's actually going to be able to do it this game, likely. Yeah, unfortunately, last game he missed it. Um, and Daniel managed to capitalise with a really aggressively and um, well-taken well uh, game. Um, but now Seb is in a position to at least get something on the board. So he's also got a rainbow energy in his hand. We might see that going into the wind pod or something like that. So before evolving, he's going to take the judge and go, no, seriously, stop having all these cards in your hand. I don't like it. How do you like it? <laughs> um... Yeah, and he'll be able to ride up speed for a KO here and everything. Um, pretty good start from Seb, I think. Yeah, this is this is a lot better than last game. Yeah. Um, Although, okay, so next turn, if Daniel was Daniel could potentially pull off a copying the copycat again and doing a ride of speed for the KO. He would need so the Marsha so he needs it to stay on the bench to attach. Yeah. Then he needs to get it into the active, and he's only playing Guzmans to do the switching. He's got the escape boards. Oh, he has the escape boards as well. That is a good point. So maybe with it's, the escape boards, it's not, boards, you it's can not hit crazy it. impossible. But um, he's actually playing a uh, full four copies of a skateboard. Yep. Um, so you know, that, that, so like with that count, maybe he can actually go into it. You know, Seb also finds a Galissa pop this turn, uh, who just, you know, just sees him take the knockout. Yeah, great looking board for Seb. Um, and yeah, it takes his first prize of the game. Yeah, it's a far more aggressive uh, you know, board. He's actually far, far more in this game. You can see Seb lays the hand out as well. It's just like, right, this is how many cards I have in my hand in case you want to you know, judge to me or shadow me do again. it again. Like If we were going to keep doing this game. Um, so what did Daniel get off of his four cards? One of them is an Acrobike. I think that's a Cynthia. But he actually takes the energy, which is interesting. Um, and a mysterious shredder dump dumping the, the ideal target here, really. Exactly. Um, well, I think Dawn Wings would also be an acceptable thing yeah. to bin. I mean, you don't want to attack with the Dawn Wings in this matchup either, because it's a wick the dark. So yeah, yeah, so you, you want to put it there. That. And it doesn't uh, discard all the energies to take a knockout on a, uh, a Zoroark. So we see an attach. Cynthia, he also has at least one Manamar attachment. He has one energy in the discard pile, yeah. It was um, attached to that Mimikyu. So this is the situation, but he does need to get more basics, I think, he right? Does. To take, take the 20, 40, 60, so it's eighty, so it's one sixty currently. So he's he need a full bench. Yeah, to take this even with it with weakness. Not impossible, but yeah, yeah, it seems he needs to get a bit. Lucky. Well, considering we know that a lot of his basics are priced, mm -hmm. like all the NK, like three NK are, there, are like priced. Getting to the full bench is tricky. Um, and he <laughs> That's has true. <laughs> so you know, getting to the point where you have. Oh, he already attached return. He did indeed. It's a good spot on Seb's part. Yeah, well, so this is the thing is like the players, like you can see Seb's like look at concentration as he's watching it. Like he's he's like watching like a hawk of going, okay, right, you've done this, you've done this. Because he can, like certain plays can tell you exactly what their hand is like and what they're looking to do. Mm. Um, so now Seb would really love a rainbow energy and a choice band and, it, and then draw into a Guzmo so he can just take out that marsh. Indeed, he would. That's the ideal thing this yeah. turn. He would rather not do it with one of the Zoroarks if he, had, you know, if he could avoid it. Meanwhile, Daniel's plan is just, well, I've got one Malamar in play. I can still technically power up this Marsh Shadow, so we'll just have to take it a little slower this game. Well, so the other thing is behind something Scott, else. Uh, so, so Seb may have spotted the fact that there's only one Malamar. There's only been one NK <laughs> played. He's probably going, well, if I can just take it out, do I win? Because, He's in a much better position, for sure. Like, if he can take the one uh, Malamar out, he, also, he evens up his prizes, which is always nice. Um, but he can get into a position where he's like, yeah, it's fine, I can just... Just knock this out. Never have to deal with you having energy acceleration. You were saying earlier on about Malamar reaches this point where it doesn't necessarily need cards in hand. It just needs a good board state. And if you just prevent that board state, it, yeah, it, you have a good chance of winning. And sometimes your prize cards prevent the good board state. Exactly, yeah. Um, <laughs> for your opponent. Um, so, yeah, you get into these tricky spots of having to kind of work out which target is best here. So he's already got the attachment with the rainbow energy. Um on the Glissopod, so looking to get, let's see, see what he's going for. Um, he is playing a third Tapu Lele, which he could go for if he wanted to. Yeah, he could go for the Lele for Guzma. 
Um, he wanted to get the, guarantee the Guzma. Looks he does like indeed. that's what he's done. So he either has the choice band in hand or he's going to go for the Malamar and just kind of go from there. I think if he goes for the Malamar, he does it with the Glissopod. Yeah, and that's an awful lot better. Because um, then there's no way for the Marsh Editor to like, respond easily. He needs the attachment from hand, which he knows he has, but Daniel also then needs to have a Guzma. Yeah. To see to be able to get somewhere, and that's what we see. I think he's doing exactly that play. Yeah, no, and this put Seb in a great position. Yeah, he probably would have preferred to have some more space for Zeroos on his bench as opposed to all those leleys. Potentially, but I think he'll he'll take what he gets here. Yeah, especially because now he's got he's got two trades online every turn. Like he'll be fine. Mm. Um, Daniel immediately <laughs> going, okay, no seriously, I need that NK. Please don't hurt that NK. <laughs> I'm going to put it back on the bench. Like, don't touch. Uh, there is a Guzma. I think I saw a Guzma in hand then for Daniel. Yeah, yeah, there definitely is. So he could copy first impression. He could. That's a KO. <laughs> um, but instead, going for the Dormings, for the 180 attack. For, yeah. Uh, yeah, for the GX, and going out the two prize card, uh, taking two prize cards, and is immune next turn, which means Seb needs to find a way of dealing with something on the bench, ideally just to mm. keep taking prize cards. Or alternatively, could come in and just armor press, do no damage. Yeah, just to prevent him. Like he's just going to make Daniel's next turn of, like kind of more difficult because I think he. Oh well, no, he still gets KO'd because of the mm. ten he's already taken from the rainbow. If Seb was mind. feeling particularly cruel, he could try and pick off the NK again. <laughs> well, especially because you saw the speed at which Daniel yeah. picked it up and put it down. Of uh... I believe he just got a double heads on timer ball as well. <laughs> yeah, so... on the turn where he really doesn't need double walk, heads on timer ball. Um, no, such is timer ball. So. There's another rainbow, I think that is. Onto the Lele. Could mm -hmm. look to, you know, use it later on to retreat. It would be his main option. Yeah. Um, also activates the Ace of Roller he, uh, he's playing, so if he wants to, like, put it in the active Ace of Roller, so we can reuse the Lele later. Yeah. Or you know, just get more Zeroos on his board, like you were saying. Yeah. yeah it gives it, it clears up some space for him. Or Tapu Curing, whatever he feels like. Um, I'm not entirely sure Tapu Cure is going to do much against Probably the deck that to take one hit knockouts, but. You know, he might. And... Yeah, he's just going to pass with the Lele active, so... Uh, not able to find a way around that GX attack, and Daniel Inge survives another day, so he will be able to get it. The second one off that he pulled off the prizes, and now actually have a decent-looking board. Yeah, if he can get into a couple of... Like, the first Malamar, get that stick, we can work from there. Well, he's got a treasure right here, so I think we're going to see that. Yeah, so... Straight back in. Like, okay... I need I need Manamars. That's how I win these games. I accelerate. That's the only way I can win these games. Yeah, and when you look at the the time remaining and the fact that Daniel's one nil up and they're they've both taken two prize cards here, um, this is when it starts looking very favorable for Daniel. Yeah, like he's managed to take the the quick ish game one, um, and is now in a position where, like we saw earlier on with these uh, Marshall, with these uh, Manamar decks, just kind of clawing their way back in, um, because once they do have that board state, they they can rely on their opponent having turns where they miss parts because yeah. they're not going to miss a part um, and we're going to see Necrozma's attack to take the KO on another Zoroark putting him down to two prizes which are two in game yep and we're going to see a choice band the Coco Judge get rid of the hand doesn't want to have Daniel you know wants to reduce the chance of Daniel having access to the second Malamar or even having a skateboard is something I think Daniel would really like, because that Marshall is definitely going out. So. Yeah, the Marshall is going, and he wants to make sure that he needs a way of retreating and setting up the attacker simultaneously. Yeah. Without having that many cards to do so. So they both draw their four. And Daniel getting a Cynthia and an Acrobike off it, so... So it looks likely that he'll find a way to hit the parts he needs next turn. Not too bad, for sure. Uh, another Zoroark. The third Zor Zor Zorark in Seb's list comes in. Uh, he has opted to cut the rescue stretches, I think. Um, I think he just looked at the trade and then put it back down on the table where it was. Yeah. I was like, ah, I don't need those. Yep. First impression is definitely going to take the KO there. And um, yep, Daniel needs to get a little, little something off of these, uh, off the Acrobike or the Cynthia. It's definitely going to be a close finish to this game. He needs a very good turn here. Yeah, otherwise it's just going to be first. You know, it's going to be armor press for the knockout. Uh, no, uh, cross and cut on the first one, and then first impression again to yeah. finish it off. 
So on the acro bike, I think one of those is an energy. Which he might want in hand because he's got enough in the discard Yeah, there's already anyway. plenty in there. If he, if he has something to attach it to, that is. Yeah, and his main concern here is... Oh no, he's a stretch, a wrestling mm. stretcher and a Malamar, okay. So he's working out what he wants to take. He can friend ball, grab the next Malamar, get two on bench, rescue stretcher, his, uh, his Marsh header back. Yep. And then he's just trying to find a way of retreating. <laughs> Um, and copying the Necrozma, I believe, that is in there. Um, I don't know if he has quite... An, he has an energy in hand as well? Yep, he does. Um, I believe he does, anyway. So, okay, so he's going to discard the Cynthia. So he must have another way of getting into a draw. So, okay, so he's going to thin the extra card. Smart play. Go for a Not Guzma. Guzma. Interesting. So he's going to rescue Stretcher, double Is Manamar. Is there a way he can win right now? Because if he rescues um, for the Marshall... Yeah, because he, he, he can... Uh, I think the Mimikyu's in discard, right? So he can uh, copy... You're absolutely he right. He can copy... Yeah. He can first impression um, for game. Yep, yeah, and there it is. So he can first impression the Zarawak for game. Uh, really interesting. Like, it was a really interesting uh, series. This shows just the power of the Marshall mm -hmm. box. Of having so many different attackers you can rely on through its various stages of the game. In what used to be a really unfavoured matchup for Manama. I think the unsung hero of that game was the Mimikyu. Especially because, like, Daniel kept rising these Malamars, he wasn't able to attach, like, the crazy amounts of energy that these decks like to attach. Um, and he's saying, well, this is a two energy attack, and it does enough damage. Yeah. So, well, so this is actually something that you have to be, like, it's actually super hard to play around. You go into these <laughs> awkward situations going, right, I need to attack, but there's a Mimikyu, and if I attack with the Mimikyu, um, and if that happens, then it's kind of tricky to kind of work with, because you need to attack to take prize cards, but if you attack, you... Your opponent takes prize cards because yeah. they get hit for weakness. Um, yeah, we actually didn't mention, but Seb did. Uh, hasn't is not playing any copies of weakness policy. No, he is not. Um, uh, unlike a lot of other Zoroark lists, so it, it seems he went for some techs and like tech Pokemon's and stuff like that. Um, just didn't have the room for it, I guess. Yeah. So in the end, unfortunately, um, yeah, not being able to kind of pull through that matchup. Daniel, congratulations, also making yeah. his uh, day two uh, with his nineteen points. Uh, squeaking in uh, with the new rules well, uh, and undefeated again. yeah and, and going in undefeated at 504 that's that's still something to be proud that's of something you tell your yeah, I mean sure yeah. they, you know the, the four draws are probably inconvenient but yeah but you don't tell him enough right yeah you, you just, just go I was un unbeaten day one yeah. and you don't mention exactly how that happened but you know you go for it so we're going to have a quick players interview I think in a few minutes so we're going to go for a quick break we'll do a pack opening with the winners I think that'd be kind of fun yep. get them to open the pack and then we will be back right with you very soon see you then Welcome for what is the last bit of action we're going to have for the end of day one. Uh, congr so, and congratulations to our winner for the last round, uh, Daniel. 
you've been undefeated. You've made yeah. it through the day. You've made day two undefeated. Yeah, I'm surprised as well. <laughs> How does that feel? It feels good. I mean, I was pretty excited. It was my first game on stream. Mm -hmm. My first day two. It's a, it's a really nice combination of things to happen at the same time. Yeah. Yeah, so how has your day gone? Like, Malamar is one of those decks can... I mean, we, see, we see your record of five and four. Mm -hmm. Were those five, everything clicked, and the four, it kind of clicked? Yeah. Like, what kind of happened throughout your day? Um, my opponent played slow, so... <laughs> ah, okay. Yeah, uh, that can happen, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I played slow as well. <laughs> Sometimes, but, uh, Yeah. can't do much. Yeah, well, this is the same thing. Sometimes there's a lot of decisions to make, yeah, so yeah. it's just like you have to go, okay, no, I really need to make sure I get this mm -hmm. right. And you want to make sure you have the full time to be able to get there. So this list is the, is this gas can more or less? Yeah. Yeah, so this is like the, 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 the typical gas can thing. Yeah, it's, it's the same as from Philadelphia. Actually. Yeah, yeah. So originally when the Zoroark and the Malamar were both in the format pre-rotation, the Zoroark was pretty heavily favored. Yeah. Here, we've seen it happen twice today. Where do you think that matchup falls for you? Mm, I think Zoroark got weaker. Because, mm -hmm. of, because they lost Bridget, mm -hmm. and my opponent bricked game ends, uh, game one. Mm, he really did. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, this deck is just really consistent. Nothing you can do wrong. Well, you know, so this is the thing we saw like t uh, the turn one of game one. He was like acrobike, acrobike. Yeah, I never bricked. Yeah, yeah. mystery treasure, yeah. ditch all my hand, draw eight, let's go. Yes. Um, also, the game two you hit, I think, was it you Mar shadowed, then emptied your hand and hit a Lily for seven? Yeah, I had to do it because I had three in Kai Price. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, we, we were talking about this, we were like, uh, yeah, so that's going to be an inconvenient thing when you search for the prizes. Yeah, the two, last two ones, yeah. Yeah, the last prizes. So yeah. Yeah. yeah, we could see on the prize camera, we were just like, when you were searching your deck, you could see a little twitch of the yeah. eyebrow, you're like, oh dear. I would have scooped if I didn't draw the yeah, if you second didn't hit it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, no, so it was a really interesting series. Uh, like, how does the match normally play out for for you now? So, just entirely rely on the Marsh Shadow. What attacks are you looking for? It's, um, I think Malama is favored mm -hmm. because I have Marsh to GX. Mm -hmm. um, if I copy um, Dominic's across my GX, yeah, 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 they can't really do much because they have to Guzma my bench Pokemon, mm -hmm. and I can knock out mm -hmm. other Pokemon. So. Uh, four prizes for yeah it's basically four yeah. yeah it's a really nice big swing um we also noticed that the Mimikyu got huge value in those games Mimikyu is really good it's one of the best cards because you just go okay you've used first impression so i just guzma and i win this yeah, is amazing I need two energy yeah copy that so yeah no it's, it's a super cool kind of tech to have as an option mm. um it was really fun to see so yeah do you have anything like you wanted to mention in particular like any any things like that's happened throughout the day you want to talk about <sighs> Not really. Yeah, no, cool. That's so, do you have any shout outs for like, people you test with or anything you traveled with or something like that? Um, I want to give a shout out to Talon. He's a really famous Yu Gi Oh player. Um, I travel with him. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's it. Just yeah. travel together. Yeah, so. cool. So, well, best of luck in your first day two. Thank you. And uh, congratulations for going undefeated through day one. So, uh, before we finish, uh, as a little bonus, uh, you, you can open a pack for us mm -hmm. if you would like. Um, keep it? No, no and sadly not. Um, and we're going to rattle away the prize, the code card on the stream. Um, so you can just kind of do a little pack opening, see what we get. And then you, we've had awful pulls. I think it's we, we let someone else have a go. Okay. Um, so you can open the pack, and then we'll rattle away the code, um, okay. and we'll see what we can do. So, because everyone really likes opening packs, right? It's always fun. Mm, uh, and it just the code, right? Yeah, so we need the code, and then, yeah, so, so, so did you get anything interesting you want to show the stream? I mean, oh, that's a fitting card to pull. Yeah. So we yeah. opened a pack, and we pulled in a Necrozma that he yeah. used to win <laughs> some of the games. So congratulations again. Thank, Thank you for joining us for the interview, and best of luck tomorrow, and we'll see you guys at 10 a.m. Uh, GM, so GMT German time. Um, we'll make tweets with all the actual time on it, so we'll see you guys tomorrow.